Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Winter Circle Sports Betting Podcast. I'm your host today, John Higgs, Tim Trimbus is showing us his, his uh, schedule for the games today. Doug Upstone with us. It you is uh, me some kind of warning that we were starting. I did. It's uh, I was gonna say October the fourth, but it's November the the fourth. My how time flies. Uh, we're gonna talk some NBA today. Two and one last week on a video from us three gentlemen. We're gonna keep that ball rolling along. But before we get to that, I hit the like button, notification bell, subscribe here to the YouTube channel, Winner Circle YouTube. Let's get on board here today. All right, free pick NBA today tonight at 7 p.m. The live NFL football, so you don't miss out on that. These are our free picks. Our premium stuff could be found on our sponsor site, gamblersworld.net. Head on over there. Me, Doug, and Chip, all of our premium plays are there. Three, seven, thirty-eight packages guaranteed. We show you a profit over that time, or we credit you back, and we do it all over again. But let's be honest. Seven or thirty-eight package, more than likely, we're going to show you a profit over time. Three days, it could get a little tricky. We could, you could be really hot and go 16 and 5, and you could go 8 and 8. It happens. It's gambling, folks. We try to win every game we put out. But that's why we got the guarantee up for you to help. Again, premium stuff at gamblersworld.net. Chippers Red Hot with Mega Box plays, six and one is NBAs. Uh, I'm doing pretty good here as well in college and NFL football. Doug, what do we? I don't know. Doug is one for the last NHL. Members. NHL. Not everybody's interested in the NHL this time of year, especially. But you should be twelve and three run. Okay, twelve and three in in hockey. So really on a on a good streak there. And uh, so yeah, and the it's. It's, it's ironic to me, at least, uh, the, let's just say the breaks are going my way in hockey, but not in football. <laughs> so it happens. Uh, so it's just, uh, you, I guess you don't get to, the gambling gods are being very particular as to what, what they like these days with me. And so I'm just kind of stuck in that quandary at the that's moment. That's not you, though, Doug. I What's think, that? I don't think that's just you. I think Doug, I think Chip will agree. I'll definitely agree. To really be working on like all sports, I think is extremely difficult. Right. I mean, yeah, well, no, no, I mean, I, we've been all been doing this for a long time. So it's not like it's, it's, this isn't new. It's yeah. just, you know, the, you know, like a, a perfect example, like a, oh, maybe a coach from what is it, the city of brotherly love passes up a field goal with a six point lead uh, <laughs> halfway through the fourth quarter. You know, I mean, that's, that's smart football, right? I mean, to, to do that. And, um, you know, <laughs> but he has no problem kicking one from 57 that hits the crossbar. Okay. But hey, you know that's why he's a professional coach, and I'm just a just a handicapper, right? right. I gotta say, one? it's good for me because I had the Jaguars. Okay, well, my I'm, father I'm, I, I, I'm, glad you, I'm glad you told me that now, as opposed to before the show, so that my blood pressure doesn't get elevated even higher. But, so. but you know what? I am 0-4 in hockey on the year, and I'm just two and two in my NBA picks. But again, I, I feel it kind of ebbs and flows, right? Things are going good in the sport. You're going to kind of concentrate on that. You start selling something, you'll take it a little more easier. But, uh, Chip, what about you? What, do you? what are your feelings on the ebbs and flows of Doug being hot in one sport and then catching bad breaks in another? It's part of the I, game, we know, but. I think the coaching is atrocious. atrocious. His decision-making is, is horrible. This whole thing with analytics with teams. Um, I mean, the Giants scored six touchdowns against Washington in two games and made one extra point. And, um, you know, Going for two in, in situations where um, I don't I don't understand if you're down 14 you score a touchdown why you go for two on the first time around um, putting pressure on yourself the second time around so uh, I think th I think coaching decisions are a, such a huge part of whether we win or lose. Yeah, I, I mean, hey, I just I mean I had nothing on the game yesterday. Uh, I know some different people at the site did, but I mean, how does the Seattle how does Seattle not take the field goal in overtime? They're going well, they're trying to end it and score a touchdown so okay. the Rams don't get the ball. <laughs> and how'd that work out? <laughs> hey, listen, I'm not saying it was the right decision. Yeah, yeah. I'm just I, saying I, mean, I understand what he was doing. I but but I, I, I for the life of me, if, if I could have a three point lead and I put the pressure on the other team, okay, to have to score. Okay, because one of the one of the outcomes as to what you just said, one of the outcomes is that you get the first down. And then you don't get it on the next series of downs. So you end up kicking a field goal anyways. So why not just kick the field goal, force the other team to have to score to try and match you. And, and if they by chance beat you, well, then they do. And that happened anyways. I, I look at it this way. When, when teams like 
a spot like that, I'll let them beat me. If, if, if I can't convert one yard and they're going to have to go 80, 90 yards to, to beat me or kick a field goal, I mean, the guy ended up breaking one. But I'm just saying, if they got to go, can the defense make a stop? You know what I'm saying? Can And that's just not Seattle. That's any team. Can you make a stop, please? Like, Eagles, if you make a stop, they're not getting the back door. Like, you know, things like, oh, the back door is about – and listen, plenty of times I've gotten back door because I'm thinking that's a lot of points. The defense yep. takes plays off. They march down the field, and here you go. But on the same token, if they just – one one tackle, one batted ball, it's a non-conversation. Like, I'm – and, again, as a dog guy, I've probably caught a lot more back doors than I should have. But on the same token – Hey, if the defense makes a stop like they're supposed to, there's no conversation. Yeah. but Well, I mean, and that's kind of the point to me with Seattle. I mean, the idea I, – I still go back to the simplest of all things. The idea is to outscore the other team, okay? So if yeah. you can have the lead, okay, especially in overtime, why would you not take it, okay? I know you want to end the game. I understand that. But that isn't always how it works out. But if you kick it – and you can still miss the field goal, by the way. OK, I'm not debating that, but it's just I, I would rather put the pressure on the other team to have to score. I mean, so obviously that was not his choice. The analytics says no, uh, to, at least his interpretation of the analytics. But as Rich Gannon said last night uh, on Twitter or X, I should say, he said uh, there's a there's a lot of coaches that are going to end up in the unemployment line by following the analytics department in yeah. professional football. And I agree with him. So they have now lost four, five or six now. So maybe you look at it as we're going to try to pull things away and get better. You know, like let's let's try to get our team <laughs> motivated. And I don't know. It, it is a tough one. Like why not score the points and uh, take a lead? How about the Colts? Let's let's bench our rookie who we drafted number five or whatever they draft this guy. Put in Flacco. Uh, midway uh, into the fourth quarter, they have seven points from a defensive touchdown. What is going on over there? What are the Colts thinking, Coach Wise? Is, he, is that guy going to be out of a job? I mean, there should be a couple guys out of a job this year. Yep. Go ahead, Chip. Got any thoughts? Well, the Colts have been great against the number for us up until last night, I mean, on the season. And uh, I just think this Richardson, not only is he raw, but he's inaccurate, grossly inaccurate, worse than Tebow. And, you know, you, you complete 10 of 24 and 10 of 30 in consecutive games. Uh, they think they have a chance. They And uh, with Richardson, I think they have no chance. And they believe they have no chance right now. Now, maybe down the line, it might be something different, but he'll probably be playing with someone else like Sam Darnold. And, uh, you know, it takes time to grow into that position if you're good enough and you have the talent. Um who knows if he can even read defenses yet? I mean, he missed 12 games at Florida. He missed 12 games last year with Indianapolis. And now um, they're sitting him voluntarily. He just hasn't had the experience. He's young. He's very young. Yeah, I, I'm thinking that the well, I mean, when you see like Sam Darnold, uh, Baker Mayfield, you know, some of these different guys, you know, that, that have turned it around. Uh, sometimes you, you just got to be in the right system and you, you, and you need to be coached up and you need to mature. And it, it seems like that position is becoming – becoming harder and harder to play, okay? Well, you know, and, and Doug, so many of these guys shouldn't be playing their first year, rookie year out. Oh. They're not ready. It's the adjustment. That's the biggest adjustment in all the sports. Being a quarterback in an NFL football team, you have to know every every function of every player on your side. You have to be able to read the defense. It's a very, very sophisticated and complicated position, unless you do it like Cam Newton where you just run the ball every time you want. Um, but – it's, it's a tough spot to be, and um, it takes time to grow into this position. Johnny Unitas didn't, didn't have an NFL win until he was 25. Aaron Rodgers sat for two years after being that count. The, uh, and the other thing, too, that, that comes into play here is that uh, – and I forget the insurance company that's promoting it, but the, uh, you know, the one now that's doing with the, the, the older guy comes in, okay, uh, out of, either out of the bullpen to either hang the picture – or to uh, yesterday with now with Colt McCoy yesterday with the bees. So see Flacco actually Flacco every time he's come in he's played well. It's been when he started he's had more of the problems. So I think there's your answer. Go with the go with the young guy. If he doesn't come in, bring in Flacco. Boom, he's on fire. He comes in just has to throw the ball because he looks so old and slow in the in the fourth quarter last night. It was uh, remarkable actually. The, the thing I mean I'm. I, 
let the guy sit, but that is not the the NFL, right? They, they they expect these guys to come in and everybody's the next Mahomes or whatever. It's so big, his and I, against LSU when he was a freshman, and he said, "Oh my goodness, this kid's going to be unbelievable," but he's I, really not accurate. How many times have I said this? These guys get drafted in the top five, top eight, whatever. They're going to bad teams. Chances are half of them have new head coaches because the other guy got fired and we're starting over. Let me get my guy. So your guy comes in behind a patchwork offensive line with like no running backs or one running back and no wide receiver. It's a team with problems. That's why you won four games. Right? I mean, and they expect these guys to go, oh, he's he takes this team to the playoffs. He's a franchise guy. Every quarterback I've seen in dress is like, oh, he's going to be the next. Come on, man. Stay in school. They're paying you now. Stay to four years. Stay at one school. Develop a little bit, and then you'll probably start in a year in the NFL or two. Have a, have a little rough patch, but man, yeah. I mean, terrible. even even Mahomes. What what do you see the field and game? The last game of the season, his rookie year, I believe it was. He didn't play it down until the last game of the season. So and they want to kill Alex Smith. All that guy did was win games. All yeah. he did was win games all over the place. Yep, it wasn't wasn't a Super Bowl quarterback necessarily, but but he, he got you the, he got you the playoffs of the champion. I mean, like right. he was, he was, he was to be good. Yeah, yep, yeah. I agree. And he and look at his career. There's another good example, right? Same same type of guy who started off he was horrible with uh, with San Francisco, I believe, and then just through you know just kept kept at it, got better at what he did, and you know at the end of his career was a a comp, more than competent quarterback. Well, I'll be talking about quarterbacks later tonight on the, the live show because I got Baker Mayfield, the guy who's known his shares as ups and downs. First, some guy, Pat Mahomes, who's got more interceptions than, than touchdown passes. Apparently, he's the best quarterback ever, though. I don't know. <laughs> let's let's do some NBA, guys. Two and one last week for the three of us. We'll take that. A nice win for the crew here. And a uh, couple games. A couple games. We're going to start with Chip. He's got the Knicks and the Rockets. And he's been pretty good with his NBA. A six and one mega bucks run with his NBA. This one here, though, a free play. Head to Gamblers World on that for chips, uh, premium stuff. Go get it. The Knicks, two point road fave, total of two and a half. Third straight road game for New York here. Last time we saw the Rockets, they were losing at home as a home favorite over the Warriors. Although the Warriors are not the old Warriors, and I think Curry was probably at that game, which is why they're a five six point favorite. But here they are, a small doggy. Chip, what do you like? Patrick well, Ewing going to be able to take care of Akeem Olajuwon in the paint tonight. Um, well, you know, I start the season with a half point loss with him in Mega Bucks, and I guess six straight since then. And um, this game, I'm excited about both these teams. Houston came on strong last year against the points in the second half of the season, and the Knicks, of course, Thibodeau has been a defensive coach his entire career, defense first, and he's got the offensive firepower now and brings in Towns, the big guy in the middle they needed. They lost some outside shooting, and there's points that um, certainly they sent away with Randall and DiCenzo, um, who, was a four, who was a national champion at Villanova three times. The Knicks had won eight straight in this in this series against the Rockets until last February when Houston finally broke through. And, um, you know, you're talking about the Knicks being um, – I was talking about the Knicks being a defensive team first, and they're seventh in the NBA in defense, and Houston's made a big jump, and they're eighth in points allowed we're talking about. I think this game stays under the total. Houston's offense ranks 29th. The Knicks are number one in three-point shooting percentage, but I think this game stays under at Houston. Teams play better defense at home than when they're on the road, so uh, I'm going to play the Rockets and the Knicks under the total. Under 217 and a half, Chip Shrimbus free pick in the video today. Again, Chip's premium stuff at GamblersRoll.net. He likes the under. I'm going to kind of agree with that as well. Doug, thoughts on the uh, total or maybe like something different there? Now, well, I'm looking at the side here. And I find it interesting, uh, and Chip raised many of the same points that, that uh, I'm not going to be redundant all over again here, but the uh, Rockets opened up at plus four and a half, and now it's down to plus two. And I looked up the injury things and didn't find anything that that showed as to why. And you know, as Chip mentioned, Rockets 29th in shooting, Knicks uh, in sh- uh, shooting percentage, and Knicks are number two in the NBA. Knicks defense, uh, you know, you mentioned about Thibodeau. It seems like since they've gotten a little more uh, offensive, that there's been a little less. Um, let's just say attention to detail on defense from from New York. Okay, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Okay, because that that grinding style uh, has proven not to do very well for them in the playoffs. 
Here's something though that I found. Okay, and I, I'm I'm actually even curious enough to to uh, see how it all plays out. So I'm going to throw this out there. In, in the loss to Golden State the other night, the in, in that game and that they lost in overtime, Houston, they they were out free throwed fifty to twenty four. Okay, in attempts. Okay, in that game. That's at so, home. At, at home. So I, I did some research, came across this, and this I just found this to be very interesting, so that's why I'm throwing it out here. So in the first seven games of a season, an underdog in a game that they just played in which they had 20 or less fewer free throws than their opponent, in their next game, they are 6-37 and 37 straight up, losing by 8.6 per game on average. Now, so... That leads me to want to take New York, okay, at minus two. And somebody might say, or either one of you gentlemen might say, why the first seven games? You know what? I have no idea, okay? It's a system that uh, that I was that I found from a friend of mine that shared it with me. And this is this occurs less than two times a year in the last 27 years. So it's a complete rarity that this happens, but yet – that 37 and six number is so overwhelming, especially for a point spread with just two. So I'm willing to take the, uh, take the Knicks at minus two for the, uh, for that game. 37 and six, I mean, six to 30, flip it around. I mean, you think they'd, you think they'd win coming off a bad game. I mean, just so, you know, I, I, I saw it, I found it, and I, I sent him an email uh, to find out why, it's, why the first seven games, because I was trying to figure it out, my, try to figure out myself, and I couldn't come up with anything, so I'm really curious to know. So if I get an answer, I will share it with everybody on Thursday, and then hopefully everybody will be right on this game. Yes. <laughs> Under 217.5 from ship here on the Knicks Houston. Next game up, though, uh, we're talking about injuries. We couldn't find any Nick game. Uh, we got a circle on this game, though, with the Bucks and the Cavaliers. Millie Wauke plus seven, a 230 and a half, one and five straight up, one and five ATS. The Cavs are perfect 7 0 against the spread and record wise straight up. Uh, again, I gave you this one, Chip, because we had talked about this two weeks ago when we did our little previews of things. We're saying, hey, we kind of like the Cavs. You mentioned the Cavs. I said, I like the Cavs with you. We weren't kind of sold on the Bucks. And hello, out of the gate. What do we have here? Cavs, a touchdown fave. And this was 114, 113 on Saturday when they played. And now we're up to a seven spot here. Yeah, and and the reasons as to why uh, that shot by uh, Donovan Mitchell with uh, 0 0.3 seconds to go, okay, to win the game. So that was a dagger. But, you know, you would think that in this situation that would be a great motivational spot for Milwaukee, okay? Get a quick turnaround on that. Sure, it's on the road. But uh, opportunity, well, I mean, the, looking to, I'm not going to say save their season, but certainly get it heading in a different direction. And Cleveland, if, if they happen to win tonight, that would be their, that would tie their franchise record for, uh, I'm actually kind of stepping in chip territory here. So I'm hoping I'm not borrowing it from him on this one. But Cleveland, if, if they win, it'd be their best start ever since the 1976-77 season. Okay. So that's, that's sort of that note. But here's the thing, Giannis tonight, questionable. So kind of where do you go with that? And when you look, if you've been following their scoring so far, there's only two guys scoring on this team, Giannis and Lillard, okay? Everybody else primarily is in single digits, including Portis. So here's the thing for me. I'm going to go with the total, okay? And in this one, when the total is 220 or higher and the road team is allowing 118 or more points per game on the season uh, and they're facing an opponent, in this case, in this case someone they just played, and, and the outcome was by less than three points, the under is 31-9 and nine with an average score of 225.8. Cleveland, Milwaukee, give me the under on this one. Under 230, Cleveland, Milwaukee from Doug Upstone here in the video. Uh, be sure to check out Doug's line mover articles here on the Gamblers World website as well. And it's premium plays, gamblersworld.net. Under 230. Chip, thoughts on this one? Um, Milwaukee's in a, in a really tough spot. Since Chris Middleton's gone down, so is their defense efficiency. I mean, they used to be one of the top defensive teams in the league, and they're at 24 right now with him out. Um, and Cleveland has a number two offense, so you've got two trends going uh, head to head. It should be Cleveland all the way, but you know, there's something about this. Uh, they Milwaukee was a two point favorite Saturday night, and Cleveland um, wins the game. I think the Bucks somehow shore up here. 
I would take the points with the Bucks. I'm glad it's not a game that I really have to make a selection on, though. Yeah, I, again, the show pick is under the 230. I have real no opinion on it. I kind of want to take the Cavs because I think they're, uh, you know, the team with something to prove, right? Bucks were the champion A, but here comes Cleveland. We thought they were good last year. They had some injuries. We thought coming into the year they take the step forward. Again, I, I can't really pull aside. I want to do Cleveland. I can't. Thank goodness I don't have to. We got the under 230 from Doug Upstone. So that will keep us going here. Final game, Sixers and the Suns. I try, you know, hey, another team catches seven here. Sixers, Embiid is out. He's got some problems. Paul George is questionable. But the seven, even if he plays, what's this going to come down to? A five and a half, a six? I mean, he's not going to move this line coming out. We expect this guy to come in and play 45 minutes and put up 35 points. No, they are one and four straight up. Uh, the Suns, five and one. I, I'm a Suns guy. I said I kind of like they're over. I thought the new coach is good. I thought their point guard they drafted or drafted or traded for to bring in, take the ball out of Booker's hand, let, let him shoot, do what he's got to do. I like the new look Suns. But I don't want to lay this kind of number because they are the Suns, and I could see them kind of taking a foot off the gas as an older team. You know, Beal's always hurt. KD's older. Booker, how about we do a little first-half action here? So I'm going to go first-half minus a four here with the Phoenix Suns, right? Again, I don't know who's playing for Philly. We have the old questionable for one of the two guys. The other guy's out. But George maybe plays, maybe doesn't. Even if he does – Coming off injury, I don't expect guys. It's like a pitcher coming off injury. We expect him to go seven innings to 120 pitches. Heck no. I don't expect a guy coming ill and hurt to come in and just explode. Not likely. Not in today's NBA. This isn't this isn't the Willis Reed era guys coming in sick and uh, putting in crazy games. Suns first half minus four for me, first half. Speaking of Willis Reed in the 70s, we're going to go to Chip. Uh, November 4th. Today's date. You like anything in this game? Perhaps you have to it's share just, something about Wee Willie Whistler back in the day, or Wee Willie Whistler. I, I, I come up with something for you, I'm sure. But, uh, it's a really tough game, and Pete is out, all the injuries. Um, you know, Phoenix, the best thing you might have going for you is that Phoenix is only two and four against the number they underachieved. They've won eight of the last ten, including four in a row. You got Booker and Durant, and I would take the points with the 76ers if you force me to play the game. But you know who was, was forced? Happened in 1914. In 1914, boxing was banned in California on November 4th. Could you imagine that? No boxing for 10 years till 1924. But I have one for you. Um, everyone that's been a big Lion fan in the season, they seem to be rejuvenated. 1934, Detroit Lions opened the season with seven straight shutouts. And in their eighth game, they gave up one score, but ran for 426 yards, 40 to 7 over Pittsburgh. And on this date, 1980, the greatest home run hitter of all time, Sadaharu O. It is 868th home run in Japan. <laughs> and in 2009, the Yankees beat the Phillies. Sorry about that, Jim. In game six of the World Series, their 27th and final championship, Hideki Matsui MVP. Otherwise, I wouldn't play Sixers, though. I really wouldn't. Godzilla Matsui for the Yanks. Let's get it done. Godzilla, he was clutch. He was clutch. Thoughts you know? on thought, thoughts on the Yankee World Series over the Phillies? No, I'm only kidding. What do you got on Sixers Suns? Well, I, I I just want everybody that has any questions about Willis Reed, okay, like who he is, send it. Make sure you put Sean, okay, Sean. I have a question. Who is Willis Reed? Okay, so we'll start there. The uh, 70, uh, 76 or Paul George. Well, I what I read this morning, he is going to play tonight. OK, so uh, so but yet even with that, the line hasn't moved okay, at all. So just it was opened at uh, minus four and a half. It's at minus seven here. Uh, Philadelphia comes in number 28 in offensive efficiency. So is George going to help that? Mm, maybe. OK. But he's not going to help the defensive efficiency at 34, that's for sure. And that, and for Philadelphia, they're number 20 on that. And on the season, the 76ers are being outscored by 9.2 points per game this early. Now, it mentioned, you know, that the Suns, you know, 5-1, 2-4 and four against the spread. And 
they've actually only played one complete game, and that was against Dallas 10 days ago. They have been playing so sporadically. Uh, they, they play hard for a while. They back off. You know, it's it's just it's, they're, they're like a teeter top. Okay, if I was going to if you want to go old school here, let's bring up that particular uh, item or, or product. Teeter top. <laughs> On, on that one. So uh, the minus seven looks big, okay, and this one, but here's something. Road underdogs outscored by nine or more points per game if they have trailed in their last three games by mo more than five points at the half, they are three and 35 straight up and being outscored by 13.1 points per game. I'm not going to back off. Uh, I don't disagree with your pick, Sean. The only reason I didn't take it is because I'm just not sure which half that the uh, Suns are going to come to play. So I'll take them for the full game at minus seven. All right. At least at least we're on the same page that the Suns should yes. be able to get it done here. And, you know, one of the games, oh, we're talking about their spread record. I had them last week here, and it was like three and a half when we did the show. I think it closed at four and a half. The game ended at four. Uh, and listen, we go what the game, what the line is when we do the show, folks. Yep. All right. I know sometimes the lines do move. These games are posted early here on, on Monday. It goes off later on tonight. It could it could change. It happens. But you know what? It's a free pick video. So if you want our cream of the crop plays, you head over to gamblersworld.net. Chip on a 6-1 mega play run with his NBA. Doug, 12-3 and three in hockey. Kicking butt on the cold cash on the ice. Go get it. And uh, me, listen, my NBA and NHL have not been great, but that's good because I got nothing going in those sports tonight. But my NFL has been pretty darn good, 16-6 and six last three weeks. I got you covered more than anything tonight. So head over to gamblersworld.net. Get any one of us, all sports, hockey, NBA, football. We got a trifecta for you tonight, folks. We got college sure. basketball tonight, too. And, co yeah, college hoops. I think there's there's like four games on today. I don't know. Yeah, or, or or well, actually, there's a there's 198 listed lined. There's 198 lined games today. Okay, I have two of them, by the way. Okay, I, I only I only have 19 of them. Only so. 19. I'm actually surprised. Here, how do we only have one noon game? I know it's Monday, but it's college. These kids are in school. Let them play the games during the day. I, I know another one. We're gonna get some nice crazy tournaments starting pretty soon. So I love. I love that day basketball. Remember the old days, or not old days to you, but remember ESPN would have the 24 hours of basketball. Oh, they still do that, but they don't do it the first week. They had a 24 hour, it would start at 6 a.m. It would be like right. NJIT was playing or somebody in New Jersey would play at 6 a.m. Yep. It would go all night long. Do they, they ha I didn't think they, they did that anymore. I, 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 well, I, mean, I could be wrong. Maybe they don't 24, but I, mean, I know they have a day maybe where they do it like 20 of the 20, 24 hours. I, I believe it's something. It's maybe I think it's been reduced to that, but there's something like that still that was, still around. That yeah, was fun stuff. Six a.m. starts on the East Coast. Yeah, morning. yeah. Flip it on your TV. I agree. <laughs> I, I I got no problem with it. And actually, there's a pretty good. Actually, not a bad game tonight too. By the way, Baylor and Gonzaga. For those that are interested, two uh, two top programs, two top twenty five programs. So if you got it, uh, get a chance to check it out. That should be a decent game. Yeah. And it's not like Kansas City and Tampa Bay should be just earth shattering. Just guessing. Well, against Kansas. Connecticut. Say that again. I said, just don't bet against Connecticut. Right. Yes. As, especially, especially when they get to February. <laughs> are they? Are they going to? Are they going to go again? Who's who's challenging them? It's tough to just say it's, some other it, team. It's impossible to 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 gauge the the first. There, I, in all sports, there should not be any polls until after the first month of the season. I mean, they're going to be good, but how good are they going to be? Yeah, I mean, I just, I, you know, how, well, with the guys that they have. I mean, look at last year. I mean, they, they were playing, for them, pretty pretty crappy late December, early January, and then they turned it on. You know? Just Insane. Early. What a job. Yep. What a job. Go to Calhoun and then to this guy. And I got St. John's being crap as usual. Forgot about Ollie. Yeah, I was going to say, don't forget about Kevin Ali. Yeah, but Definitely he's not a Hall of Famer, though. No. He's not a Hall you know, come on. We're talking, I mean, Hurley's on a Hall of Fame path right now. Yes. All right, we're going to wrap this up. We covered some recapping the football weekend, bad coaching, bad quarterbacks, some college hoops for you at the end. Recapping today's picks. Suns first half for me, minus the four. Chip Shermis likes the under Knicks, 217 and a half. Doug Upstone under Bucks Cavaliers 230. 
These are our free picks. The premiums and cream of the crop plays, the top plays, gamblersworld.net for all of your sports betting needs. 3 7 30 packages guaranteed, folks. Go get them. Individual day packages are up. We got you covered. Hit the like button on the way out. That's absolutely free to do. Comments the same. Come in and harass us. We don't care. It's all right. We're here. We win. We lose. We get on with our lives. Tonight at 7 o'clock, you got something to say for NFL? I'll be here at 7 p.m. Eastern. I'll put out some props for you in this game on Monday Night Football. Hope to see you there. For Doug, Chip, and myself, happy Monday. Me, Matt Fargo, Chip Trimmers tomorrow. Take it easy, folks. Bye-bye.